welcome to Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, William Morales. And on today's show, I have Kajal Shahani. Did I pronounce it right now? Kajal Shahani. Uh, do I keep saying Kajal? Kajal yeah. Shahani. Uh, mm -hmm. She's an award winning realtor and Interos top 1% agent serving the Silicon Valley for 17 plus years. She has been featured on HGTV, talk radio shows, and TV. Thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I am good. I am good. Thank you so much for being, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule. And, uh, you know, one of the questions I always like to ask anyone like yourself, did you know you always wanted to be an entrepreneur when you were younger? Just, was this something in your blood or did you grow into it? So I grew up in it for sure. Both my parents are realtors. Um, they've been self-employed as long as I can, as long as I can remember. Um, but honestly, I always thought I wouldn't do it because of that. And I always thought I wanted uh, more stability and I wanted to be part of corporate America because it seemed so glamorous and um, fun to say you have stock options. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> no, but I did it for six months and hated every day, every minute of it. And then 22 years old, jumped into real estate. Oh, so you were that young when you jumped into real estate? Yes. I had just graduated UC Irvine uh, with a degree in econ and uh, joined, I was a marketing consultant uh, for Wrigley, Wrigley Gum, oh, okay. uh, that moved me out to Chicago. And it was a, an amazing city to live in in your early 20s, super amazing. Uh, but I didn't like my job. It was not fulfilling at all. I would show up at nine and leave at 4.59 and... Mm. I, I couldn't even remember what I did all day because it was so boring. And so uh, while I did that, I ended up getting my sh my Chicago real estate license and um, ventured into a Remax uh, office one day and showed up and said, I'm a new licensee. Can someone help me? <laughs> and then the rest is history. Wow. So how was the support early on? You know, because, you know, you know, today's topic is empowering women in real estate. Yeah. Um, Going forward, how was your, what kind of support did you get? I mean, um, or did you struggle early on? Did you have that support system go, um, around, that, around the age of 22, 23 when we started? So um, honestly, I'm so thankful that I started so young because responsibilities were very minimal. Um, my parents were helping me play, pay for my swanky apartment in downtown Chicago. So, um, but the support system was, was great. Um, I had my parents support for sure. Um, I think they were secretly worried that I was jumping into this world that they knew so well um, and how it's not financially stable unless you get to a certain point. And, and that's all entrepreneurs, right? That's uh, jumping into it. Uh, that's the challenge. It's like, how do you keep yourself afloat? Um, so the support was there for sure. Um, but as I was in Chicago and my parents and my entire family, they're, they're all in real estate, but they all lived in California. So when I walked into the Remax, the broker there said, hey, I'm going to introduce you uh, to one of my agents who would be a fantastic mentor for you. Mm -hmm. um, and he just, I, I mean, we're still in touch 22 years later. Uh, he was a fantastic mentor. And my first month in the business, I closed one deal um, and I credit it to him. So the support system was very much there. And um, since then, I, that first year, I think I closed 36 buyer transactions. I was his, I was my mentor's buyer's agent, basically. Um, and then three years into selling real estate in Chicago, uh, I ended up getting married in Chicago. My husband and I moved back to California and I kind of restarted my career as a California agent in 2005, which was extremely difficult. Um, the support system was there, but it's a very different market. And when you come back home to everybody being in real estate, uh, every single cousin, parent, uncle, aunt's in real estate, uh, the support was there. They, they knew what I was going through, but, uh, but it was, but it was a struggle, but the support was definitely there. Granted at that time I had no kids. So the responsibility level is very little when you don't have kids. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So um, early on in your career, did you notice a lack of women in the real estate field? Um, was, was that a reason that you wanted to get into in, a way into empowering more women to get into real estate? Was that was it that lack of, of let's say, diversity in terms of men versus women? Um, so the interesting part is uh, 20 years ago, I do have to say there were definitely more men realtors than women realtors. 
Mm -hmm. um, now it's the polar opposite. I would say uh, most of the, no, honestly, I hate, most of the top agents are women. <laughs> um, I, think, I think being able to juggle family, life, kids, and work as a realtor, there's a lot of space that you can play around with with your schedule to make it work. Um, and I think realtors, uh, women realtors are just more personable uh <laughs> that's my take <laughs> so um a little controversy there but no i i believe so i definitely believe that's true yeah and and uh it, you know looking for a home it has a lot to do with your family life it has a lot to do with kids it has a lot to do with how people live which which is very female driven so um so now i feel like most of the top realtors that i know are actually female <laughs> You know, I saw, I had seen a poll once uh, and I had interviewed um, a woman from Arizona and yeah. she sent me a website or her assistant with the top agents in, in the Arizona area. And you're right, I think 12 out of the 15 were women. I yeah. was like, wow. And it's weird because, you know, and I want to talk about this, about networking events. Yeah. Um, for me personally, when I go to networking events, I still see a lot more men than women. Are you seeing that also at networking events or do you see maybe now it's evening out somewhere? Very even. I think in the real estate industry, it's extremely even when it comes to realtors. Um, and if I were to look at the top 10 agents, even in my office, my local office, I mean, a lot of them are women. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I see and I think too, Compared to, listen, I'll, I'll be the first one to say, you know, I could be very disorganized compared to women where I work with women and my God, they got everything, the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. And yes. are you finding that yourself with, with, the, with the people in, in your office? Yes, I think women uh, definitely, have, you know, granted, like, I mean, there's parts of even my life that I'm very disorganized right? <laughs> like, when it comes to when it comes to, okay, where are my car keys? And like those kind of things. But when it comes to work, absolutely. Very teed up. Uh, granted, I don't know, men versus women, realtors. I've seen a lot of men um, that are very detailed. Very, or my dad is, an, is a great example. Very detailed, very organized, very meticulous. Um, but I think women in general are better multitaskers. And that's probably a proven fact somewhere out there too. But yeah, I don't um, argue that point. I think that is true. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that has a lot to do with, uh, you know, spilling into what we do with real estate. So when did you decide that empowering women was your calling? Or was that such a thing as a calling? Can I say those words? Um, well, you know what's funny is now, now I can say that. A um, couple of years ago, I, I think I was transforming into that and kind of like being more mindful of that, but didn't realize it until. I started getting um, female agents call me and say, how do you do it? Like, what are you doing? How do you do it? What's your schedule like? And I'm like, well, nothing, um, nothing that I think is very mind blowing, you know? But then as I start talking about it, it's like, okay, what time do you wake up? When do you get your work done? So I, I have three kids, um, 11 years old is my oldest. And then I have twins that are eight. And they're all very involved with friends and things that they do, etc. So my working hours are all over the place. Um, but what I found, and I'd say the past year has really, really drilled this into me because obviously past year COVID life, uh, working from home as a realtor, I was always working from home, but now it's like, really, I'm working from home. Yeah. And, um, I started waking up like four, four thirty in the morning. And by the time my kids woke up, I was done with, like my work oh, wow. and granted anything that came up after that was things I had to do or, or client calls and who's really going to talk to me at 4 30 AM. Um, I have a few clients that know my schedule and they'll say, Hey, we'll do a call with you at six, six 30. I'm like, bring it on. You know, my kids are asleep. This is like the perfect, it's like the best time to work. Um, so I would go into the day a lot less frazzled and my kids are very involved with life where one of them dances, one of them plays soccer, the other one plays basketball. So they have um, very scheduled items where I'd have to take them like tutor classes and those kind of things. So my day would be filled with like Ubering them around and I, I sit in my car and work and that's when I get my calls done and, and check my email and respond, etc. 
when I'm just like parked on the side of the road. <laughs> um, but this past year has really taught me that, uh, you know, like you, you can make it work. And especially as a mom, as a female, as someone who has more responsibility than just my work, um, it's very feasible with, with a good schedule going and, and like good sleep and in those kind of things too. <laughs> a lot of it is time management. It seems like you, you definitely are, are the queen of time management because you set a, a schedule. It seems that way. Maybe tell me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you do, you know, you wake up at four 30, you could take a call at six, then your kids might wake up, then you take care of them. And it seems like you, you know, are on a roll throughout the day unless you know there's some issues that come up that that might be unexpected um is that yeah. is that you know uh, did i assess that correctly absolutely absolutely and i try very hard so i don't physically meet clients on saturdays mm -hmm. which as a realtor it's like, what? You don't meet clients on the weekend? Like, what's that? <laughs> but um, it's been like that for a few years now where I don't physically meet clients on Saturdays and it just works better. It's less frazzled. And I, but then I pack in my day on Sunday. So my husband's on complete daddy duty on Sunday. I don't see anyone in the morning. Everyone's asleep. I sneak out. Um, my kids are very well versed that I'm not around on Sunday. That's the day I show property. I do open house. Um, I do, I try to catch up with calls that are not time sensitive for that particular day. So anybody that, that I feel like I need to talk to and it's kind of been lagging, I'll do that on a Sunday. Um, I do all my like best podcast listens and my, my books on Sunday while I'm driving. So Sunday is, is like my Monday for most people. Um, and it's been like that for a few years now, which has been um, a saving grace. And I try really hard not to have any evening appointments because I just think it's too challenging to juggle kids, homework, dinner, life, be getting to bed on time, et cetera. So I stopped taking evening appointments and I stopped working Saturdays. Now, when I say stopped working, that doesn't mean... <laughs> I don't have my phone and email going, <laughs> um, but just physically. Yeah, just physically. <laughs> right. So with, with what you want to accomplish with, let's say, like I said, empowering women, what do you hope to accomplish? Like, again, are we looking to get more women in the business or maybe start their own business? Um, what are you looking to do or, or you hope to accomplish in the next three to six months or even if it's years? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this goes for any business, any lifestyle. The, the, I think with women with, and especially when you get into the phase of having kids and having to manage all of that. And, you know, when the kids are, are babies, you're like, oh, I'm going to get out of it. It's, you know, it, just a couple of years and then it'll get, but it, it doesn't get any better. If anything, as they get older, they need you more. Um, and you have these bigger, longer types of life lesson conversations that, you know, that happen with kids. Um, and you need time and energy and, and mental capacity for all that. So I think with women, especially women that have their own business, sticking to a schedule that works for you and your family is crucial. Um, I didn't a couple of years ago, and it was, it was truly just not working. Right. Um, getting that schedule going. And, and for women, it's like, you know, sometimes I do hear uh, newer realtors, they'll say, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. And I, and I try to tell them like, stick to your schedule, put, put your non-negotiables in, get your work done, but do it when the kids are asleep. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so magic. But Good then, <laughs> you know, but other things too, like I do get, honestly, I get a massage a week to keep myself sane and going. I do have a personal trainer that I see twice a week and it's a 20 minute strength training workout that's magic it's magic i've been with my trainer for four years um but that doesn't take a whole lot of time out of my schedule um so those kind of things keep me going as mom family wife all those roles um and those to me i realize if i skip any of those for even two weeks i'm kind of not the nicest person to be around at home <laughs> no it's fair so, enough <laughs> yeah so, you know, kind of sharing that with fellow female entrepreneurs or female, you know, honestly, corporate work is, is crazy. People, you know, a lot of moms commute, um, but just keeping your schedule going and keeping your, your mental in check is so important. 
Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, you know, it's funny because like for me, you know, I, I, I have a full-time job, but I do real estate on the side. But oh, okay. And yeah, on the weekends, I go here in New York City, we go roller skating. So there's a little oh. section in New York City in Central Park and we block it off and we just skate, listen to music, have a couple of beers and enjoy the sunlight because after a week of, of you know, going to work from nine to five and then doing my real estate business for another three or four hours, yeah. I'm like sometimes fried by Friday, yeah. just falling asleep, uh, coming Friday. home from work. So uh, are you seeing a positive change in the business regarding women in real estate? I, I interviewed one woman a few years ago, I mean, a couple of years ago, and she was telling me that when she first got into the business and that, uh, I think it was in the nineties, she wasn't being taken seriously. Yeah. Um, did you run into anything, anything like that or any of your female friends or, or, or sure. colleagues, you know, go through that period? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I still do sometimes. Um, I get to a point where a client will ask me, you know, brand new client who perhaps doesn't know me, hasn't been referred to me, some online lead of some sort, and um, kind of like, hey, do you have time for me? I know you have multiple kids, and I know this, and I know that. And, um, you know, my answer usually is like, I, you know, this is my full-time job. I take it very seriously. Um, and if I don't have time for you, I won't take you on as a client. That's, that's bottom line. Like, I, I won't do it. Um, so yes, but yeah, I, I do, I, I would say earlier I used to get a lot of like, oh, she's too young or, you know, and that granted may not have be, have a female factor, but there's a little, there's a little connotation to that as well. Um, best story was when I was pregnant with twins, when I was expecting the twins, uh, there were a few realtors in my market that started telling people that I wasn't going to be in the market anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Were and that was competitors. They were competitors. And I heard it from um, a few sellers that I went on listing appointments mm -hmm. where another realtor would be. And they, they happened to be males who said it. Um, I never, like, I would never confront somebody with that because it's like, sure, you want to say that, but I'm not. So, and I'm still going to be around and right. that'll kind of show you that I'm still working. Um, but a few times, uh, a seller who ended up working with me when I was expecting twins said, you know, it's so interesting. I interviewed so-and-so and he was mentioning that you're going to be phasing out. I was like, whoa, I don't even know this person. <laughs> um, so I got a lot of that when I was pregnant with the twins, not so much my first, but um, when I had my first daughter, I was somewhat newish. I was like third year in the business. Mm -hmm. um, by the time I had uh, the twins, which was three years later, I was now six or seven years in the business, but probably showing up more than before um, to my competitors. So that was interesting. Um, now, not so much. I don't get that at all anymore. Okay, which is so nice. who you are, and they uh, yeah. hopefully they respect what you have accomplished. Right. So, and I and I like the fact that you know, you stood your ground, even though you didn't say anything, but you showed it, you know, you, you well, took action. And that's right. more important, in my opinion, more important than just talking because, you know, you could talk and not do anything, but you showed action. Right. I, I could never confront somebody on something like that. Like, there's no point to me. There's no point in fighting about it. <laughs> yeah. So can you talk more about, uh, you have a mentorship program for, for um, um, aspiring entrepreneurs? Um, you know, that's so funny you asked that. I don't, I, I don't formally have something like that. Um, it turns out to be like that where I do get a lot of newer agents that just kind of, you know, I just keep talking to them through their ups and downs and those kind of things. Um, nothing formal, but, but happy to obviously connect with anyone. Maybe this is a calling that you haven't uh, answered yet. You never know. Yeah, possible. <laughs> you know, if you have all these people coming to you, especially, uh, yeah. uh women, you know, yeah. guidance, you know, someone more professional that been in the business. Yes. Uh, this is something you, you might have in you that you might have to, you know, uh, let, let people know about. I, yeah. I, know, I think you sure. should. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> what next to you, what are you looking to do in the next three to six months personally and, and professionally? Sure. So, um, so professionally, so this has been, so 20 years in the bar, 18 years in the business. Um, I've closed uh, 56 homes so far in 2021, mm -hmm. um, which has been the craziest year of my career for sure. On average, 
prior to this, I was closing about 40 to 45 homes a year. Um, this year definitely kicked it up. Um, I think this year what's changed, obviously, COVID life, right? That's, it, you, I feel I've been a lot more scheduled in the past 14 months, um, which has probably helped. But then also I've, you know, definitely put myself a little bit more out there on social media platforms and those kind of things. So I kind of want to take that to the next level. Um, maybe I'll throw in some mentorship goals now that you're mentioning it. It'd be kind of fun. <laughs> and, to take advantage of it. And I'm not saying it in that in a bad way, but I'm just saying because you have so much to offer being in the business for that long and someone that's starting out, especially a woman that might be in their early 20s. Right. You look for someone like you that have the experience and can share what you've been yes. through, especially in this supposedly male-dominated business. Yes, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, that'd be a nice little uh, personal goal of mine. And then, and then professionally speaking, my, my wholehearted goal is to hit um, 100 deals for this year on my own. I do have a few partners here and there, and so that's kind of my separate goal. I'd love to do 25 with them. But personally, if I can hit 100, um, I would be very proud of myself. <laughs> what was you for? So, um, and before I let you go, just a couple more things. Um, do you have a book in you? You know, you have a book that you, I don't know if you could recommend any books, but do you have a book in you that we don't know about yet? Yes. And I'm sure you know about it. I'm, I'm sure you know about the ones that I'm going to mention, but, um, I, you know, it's so funny through, through the years of listening to real estate coaches and, and I listen to podcasts all day long now. Um, but you, you listen to these coaches saying, get into this book, get into this book. But I never really got into it until you realize you need to get into it. <laughs> really, yeah. um, so it's been very, very life changing. So a couple of books that I recently got into that are just mind blowing to me that I think anybody, even if, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in a different, whatever it is, um, winning by Tim Grover is oh, I heard of that. Yes. I heard of Tim Grover. I, oh, I, I, yeah. I heard about, about him just about a year ago. And I just heard about the book maybe about a month or so ago. Give it to oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. And he talks about, um, so he was Kobe Bryant's coach, Michael Jordan's coach. So there's a lot of like sports connotation in there, but there's so many life lessons that you're like, wow, that speaks to me. Um, so Tim Grover winning, highly recommend. I think one that pertains to the female audience in particular for me right now is Time to Thrive by Ariana Huffington. Okay. Fantastic. Like mind blowing. Like I think I listened to it twice and there's nothing like really new in the book. It's stuff that we know and it's stuff that, that we know we're supposed to do. But her kind of whole takeaway is you make your changes in your life so small, so, so small, but they're, but they're positive changes along the way um, that you can't fail. So then you're not, you know, it's kind of like saying, oh, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in a month. And it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> right. you know, you're not you know? yeah. But, um, but I love her examples. And for her, she really, really focuses on um, mastering sleep, which I, th so I wear a sleep ring. I don't know if you can see it, but I wear the aura ring. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, uh, it tracks my sleep and my husband has it too. And it's funny. We're always very competitive with each other because he's <laughs> kind of like, so my husband's a chiropractor, totally not in the business. Um, but entrepreneur, he has a crazy schedule as well. And, um, we joke around about these because he's like, a master in in sleep but like he doesn't get more sleep than i do he just has better quality sleep um so anyways i now track my sleep my sleep right. score i try really hard which i fail all the time i try really hard not to look at my phone before i go to bed which Isn't that such a hard habit to break i'm one of those guys too man that's so hard i mean i was browsing on pinterest last night i mean it's like me, like, well, Instagram, or my email. Even though I might have seen my email like 15 times already, I'm like, well, maybe I got another email. And it's usually, I, I look at, you know, properties on Zillow or, yes. or whatever. And, I, and if I see something, I'm like, oh, let me just open it. Even though I try to go to bed at 10.30 and it's 10.31, and I'm like, what am I doing? I can wait till tomorrow. Yes. I, I, I no, it's, after that day. it's so bad. <laughs> oh, totally. It is so bad. But... But that's one thing, but, the, but her, but um, time to thrive, what I love about it is, okay, so my problem is like staring at my phone mindlessly at night when 
I mean, I was like on Amazon and Pinterest last night, but nothing like time sensitive. I, it was just fun, right? Um, and then I looked at my sleep score this morning. I was like, wow, you know, the blue light really probably got to me. Um, but, but I think uh, with her book and her little small changes, um, I'm, I was able to make a few changes through it. And I've listened to that book twice. So I don't sit there and open a book and read because I swear I'll fall asleep. Um, <laughs> I'm all about the audible. So, ah, so for I'm me, the opposite, but yeah, I got you. I like reading, but. Oh yeah. See, I can only do audibles. I, you know what it is? <laughs> I, if I listen to an audio book, I have to listen to it like three or four times because I'm like, okay, my mind starts wondering. That's why I like to read. I'm a, more of a visual person. Yeah. So for me, it was like once the audibles, I mean, I, I probably get through three, three to four books a month. Um, and the most of it I, I listen to on Sunday during my work days. Um, but the one that I'm listening to right now uh, is called The Power of Moments. Okay. It's incredible. It's incredible. And I think for me, one of my personal slash professional goals this year is um to call out moments in my clients lives because now i've worked with clients two three four sometimes five times um and it's nice to look back and say oh you guys have come such a long way i sold you that house in 2005 we're in 2021 and and you have this much more square footage and these many more kids and it's just kind of like a it's kind of a nice call out um yeah. and kind of like a client touch base yeah so so that's been good. But I think my all-time favorite right now is Tim Grover's winning. I think it's like mind-blowing. <laughs> yes, I hope we put those on the show notes. And if somebody wanted to find you, what's the best way to uh, get in touch with you? Absolutely. So Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, if you DM me on any of those, I will absolutely respond. Um, any females out there that are starting out or in the middle of their business career or at the end reach out i'd love to touch base yeah i mean do you want to um, name them do you want to put uh, you know like uh, if they want to your name or how they should how yeah how they should find you sure absolutely it's um it's kajal shahani real estate okay so kajal shahani real estate i'll definitely put that on the notes well first of all Kajal, thank you so much for being on Peter Peter Real Estate Show. I really enjoyed this. I, I love uh, how you broke down your, your time management schedule because believe me, I'm taking mental notes. So this is something that I need to do. And I and I <laughs> oh, good. out there to empowering women because, you know, I have sisters. I, I want them to get into the business, but they're hard headed. So, you know, maybe I'll show them this episode. Maybe they might uh, call you one day. You never know. So if you hear the last name Morales, that's that's anytime. <laughs> Well, anyway, sounds good. Thank you so much for being on the Real Estate Show. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Well, everyone, that was Kajal Shahani, and you can find her at kajalshahani.com. That's K A A J A L S H A H A N I.com. Kajal, thank you so much for being on today's Peter Peer Real Estate Show. Really appreciate it. You can find me at peer to -peer That's peer and number two peer .com. Check out our past shows and check out our blog. Also, when you get a chance, please go to Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe. Leave a review. Tell us how we can make this show better. And before I go, guys, there's a couple of more things. Do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it. Guard it. Protect it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. And I really believe if you keep the momentum going, good things will happen. On behalf of peer to -peer Real Estate, I'm Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and please be safe.